Hi, this is Ruben Lerner, and welcome back to my Python Standard Library Video Explainer Series. This time we're going to talk about substituting text. So, I'm going to say import RE, and I once again want to point out that I'm not teaching regular expressions in this video series. If you want to learn regular expressions, and you should, you should go to regexpcrashcourse.com, where I will happily teach you one day at a time via email, how to use regular expressions. Okay, so import re. So here's the thing. People often want to replace strings. So if I say here s equals a, b, c, d, f, g, b, c, d, f, g, a, b, c, d, f, g, and just for excitement, a, b, c, d, f, g. Okay, now we have that string. So let's say I want to replace all the occurrences of e with capital X. So I can say s dot replace e with capital X. And that will certainly work. And remember, since strings are immutable, I'm going to get a new string back. So I haven't actually changed s. OK, that's a string method, of course. What if I want to change a to x? And I can say s.replace of a to x. What if I want to change either a or e to x? Well, then I've got a little bit of a problem. I mean, I could sort of chain these methods. But that's where re.sub comes in. And re.sub says, I'm going to describe what I want to change in a regular expression. So I'm going to say AE in a character class and change that to X in S. And sure enough, now every occurrence of both A and E have been replaced. So that's the simplest possible case for using RE.sub. It replaces all the matches to this regular expression with this string. OK, what if I don't want to replace all of them? What if I want to replace just a few of them? Then I can give a number here. I can say replace up till two of them. And you'll see it only did two replacements. The rest of the A's and the E's were kept, you know, sort of left alone. Um, there's actually a variation on re.sub called re sub n, where if I do this, you'll see I'm going to get back a tuple. And I'm going to get the resulting string and the number of replacements that were made. Now, this might seem kind of stupid. I asked for two replacements. It gave me two replacements. But if I ask here for 200 replacements, then it's going to return 8, meaning actually, even though you said I'll do, I can do up to 200 replacements, it's only, it only actually did 8. So you get the tuple back there. And of course, you can retrieve that with you know, new string and you know, replacement count equals. And then we can just put this whole thing in here. And then thanks to the magic of unpacking, I can say the new string is this guy, and replacement count is that guy. And you can hear even the birds are excited outside of my office. OK, so is that all? That is not all. It gets even better than that. So let's say I want to replace each, uh, you know, A and E with, you know, starred versions of themselves. Meaning, so A should become star A and E should become star E. Now there are different ways to do this. We can use capturing groups and so forth. But I want to show you something that's kind of cool about sub. So here's what I can do. I can say here, sub of A or E, and now I'm not actually going to pass it X. I'm going to say star vowel. What the heck is star vowel? Star vowel is a function that I'm about to write now. Def star vowel. And star vowel is a function that will be called on each match. And each match will then be passed to it in a match object, which I'm going to call M. And then I can say return F of, we're going to have stars here, and in the middle we're going to say M group zero. Now you might remember that M group zero means I want to get all the text that matched. And if you have parentheses in there, and you know, regular expressions get kind of complicated and messy, but basically if you have parentheses inside of your regular expression, this will allow you to also extract certain pieces of it. So if I do this now, well, what is it going to do? It's going to replace up to twice all the times that it finds either A or E with the result of the function star vowel. So what I can do here is actually call the function and do something with it. Now this star vowel is kind of stupid, right? But what if I say like, you know, ORD of A or ORD of E. Aha! Well, now I'm getting the, well, I would call it the ASCII value. It's really like, you know, the UTF-8 value. It doesn't really matter. So let's say, you know, def um, star ORD of M. Now I'm going to say return F of star star. And in the parentheses, I'm going to say ORD of M group 0. That gets there, and that gets there, and that gets there. I think I've now got that correct. So now if I were to say re.sub of either A or E in, and we're going to say star ORD, and then we're going to say S. So now what's happened is each of the vowels A and E has been replaced with a starred version of 
its ASCII value. Now, I'm not saying this makes it more readable, right? This is not something that I wish upon people in terms of their strings. However, however, it shows you the power that you have to do things with re.sub. It's not just simple substitutions. All right, hope this was useful, and I will be back very soon with another Python Standard Library video explainer. If you are enjoying this series, I really recommend that you subscribe to my weekly free Better Developers uh, uh, mailing list. Every Monday I send out a new article and tutorial. It's pretty long. It's like a thousand words or more, sometimes even up to 2,000 words. It's a full-fledged article about Python and different aspects of Python and the whole Python ecosystem. You can sign up uh, at the URL that's in the show notes here or in the notes, I guess I, that's, that's what you call it in YouTube. And I will see you next time in the video explainer series.